Hey, Dan back again at long last. Um, I'm not even going to bother to make any excuses for being away for a long time. Manic busy lately, but um, I received something in the post today that I really did feel I had to do a video about quickly. Um, so I'm cramming this in between a few appointments I've got to do today. Uh, first of all, though, just two other quick things that I want to show you. Um, something I read cover to cover when I received it last weekend. Um, a new Amiga book has just been released. Um, I pre-ordered this from Amazon back in... I think it was around January, completely forgot that I'd ordered it, um, and then got a nice little surprise when it turned up in the mail on Friday. So it's by uh, Jimmy Meha, I believe you pronounce the name. It's called The Future Is Here. Um, it's about the Commodore Amiga, and kind of just a book showing off some of the Amiga's classic features that really made it so far ahead of the time when it originally came out back in 1985. So um, yeah, definitely recommend getting hold of a copy of this. I believe there's also gonna be a uh, digital Kindle copy uh, released very soon as well. And uh, something else that I've been playing, um, not on my Amiga, but uh, actually on my iPad, if you can see this, take off the smart cover. This is actually an iPad remake of the um, old Amiga classic Pinball Dreams, um, complete with music. Um, now they kind of remade it slightly differently, it's in a 3D perspective, a little bit hard to do it like this, but it's probably better actually if I turn it that way. There we go. Just tap either side of the screen there, and uh, they've actually updated the graphics quite nicely on this, so um, if you're an iPad owner, I definitely recommend getting a hold of a copy of that. I think it was only about £2.95 as well. Um, now, the main subject of this video. Um, I received something today that I've been waiting for for around two years, actually. Um, it's actually, I'll go straight to the point, it's an individual computers, Indivision AGA Mark II. And now uh, what this does, it scan doubles the Amiga 1200, 4000, um, and there's one for the CD32 as well, I believe, which means it makes it possible to um, connect your classic Amiga um, up to a modern PC monitor and display a whole variety of screen modes that normally you wouldn't be able to use on a standard television as well. Now, I've been waiting two years for this because the original version came out back in around 2008, 2009. I missed out on it, um, hoping, you know, that they'd have some in a few months' time and had a few more uh, pounds in the bank. But unfortunately, I missed out on it and they've been rare as hen's teeth for about two years. So as soon as I saw that they were releasing a second edition of the Indivision AGA, I pre-ordered this um, a couple of months ago. Uh, it took Amiga a couple of weeks to send it out to me. I think I read somewhere they've been inundated with like loads of orders, so it's uh, taken them about two or three weeks to get this sent out to me, but it's finally arrived. Um, so this video, I'm gonna show you um, a little kind of review of the Indivision AGA. I literally only received this this morning, so I'm gonna fit it to my Amiga 1200 for the first time. Fingers crossed nothing will go wrong and it'll work. Um, I'll give you a bit of an overview of it and also show you how you can connect classic Amiga to a modern day PC monitor. Um, first of all, I thought I'd show you how I've currently got my Amiga 1200 set up. Now um, I'm doing this handheld so I can be a bit more free with um, this section of the video. Um, but I've got it on a, a separate table here. Um, and then it's hooked up to a 24 inch Samsung flat screen TV, um, which gives a pretty nice display. Actually, one of the most uh, common questions I get off people is, what screen mode are you using on, uh, on that big display for the Amiga? Um, it's currently running in PAL interlace mode, um, which as you can see up close, it's got no flicker or anything like that. The reason is because um, this monitor stroke TV actually does have a built-in flicker fixer. Now, um, it is actually technically an HDTV, this um, set that I've got here. Um, but the, uh, the input that I'm using at the moment is a wire that I got from Amiga Kit, which goes from the RGB port on the back if you can see that, um, with audio, and then it goes into the back of the TV set um, and connects into the SCART socket. Um, a lot of flat screen TVs, the higher end ones, have actually got flicker fixes built in. Uh, but the only problem that you then get is if you want to use any higher screen modes for workbench um, that are normally supplied by the VGA port, um, most TVs will only do the standard PAL via SCART or NTSC, and then you'll have to use VGA for the higher screen modes. But you cannot mix the two, which is a bit annoying. So with the Indivision, I'll be able to get all of the uh, nice higher resolution screen modes that the AGA chipset brings. And uh, also, I'll be able to use um, the standard screen modes for games and everything all through the same wire. So 
I'm going to have to get the Amiga opened up and then we'll set about fitting the Indivision AGA. Right then, I've um, unconnected my Amiga 1200 and put it over on this desk so we can um, get the machine opened up and then we can try and get the Indivision AGA fitted. Now, um, there's no trapdoor on my machine because I've got this um, 68030 accelerator in here. Um, which is also made by um, individual computers and bought from Amiga Kit. wasn't very expensive either. I think it was only about um, it was about 60, 70 pounds, I think. comes with 64 megabytes of RAM on it as well, so um, gives it a nice little increase in speed and um, brings the Amiga 1200 up to a whopping 28 megahertz, uh, which is actually pretty fast for a classic Amiga. Nothing compared to my um, quad-core Core i7 PC, though. Right then, so I need to take all of the screws out of the uh, A1200 here. Um, I'm doing all this on camera so you can just really see you know how difficult or simple a procedure is um, of fitting this card like I said it's the first time I've done it so it's gonna be a bit of a learning curve for me as well um, try my best not to elbow the camera here too so uh, yeah we've got two screws at the back of the A1200 that needs to be removed I'll take that out there um, there's one in here and the final screw, I believe, is that one there. Put these aside. Um, yeah, that's popped out. Come on. All right then. Flip it back over. Um, make sure that we're aligned properly on the camera. Yep. All right then. So um, I'm going to pull the top of the case up now. Lay that back there. Now I've already removed the. Um, the metal shielding from this machine before uh, in preparation for doing this. Um, normally Amigas do actually come with uh, some RF shielding on them. Um, I think that's really only for FCC regulations in America. Um, it's not really needed though, I mean uh, this has been taken off, it's got a bit of a <laughs> a little bit of a quick and dirty fix. I've uh, put some velcro on the bottom then, some tape so nothing shorts out. So uh, let's get the Indivision AGA opened up which is here um, and also it comes with a few other little bits in the box as well such as an earth cable which um, I've read on the forums you're not really um, required to fit that really the only reason they include that is um, again to um, make sure they comply to regulations for selling it um, also got a little what appears to be a mounting screw there for the back although it doesn't seem to come with a face plate so I'm not exactly sure what that will be used for so uh, let's get into the bag first Right then, here it is. There's the Indivision AGA. Um, comes with a long cable already fitted. And the cable then will go into the uh, the adapter for the DVI. Um, so it's actually got DVI out. I believe there's also an adapter being sold where you can uh, hook it up to HDMI, which is pretty cool. Um, and I think this just comes off if you want. Yeah, Amiga Kit actually supplied these by the looks of it. So we'll uh, put that back on there. Right then, so um, I've heard that the original Indivision AGAs had some problems with uh, coming loose from the chip that you've got to mount it over. But this one apparently solves a lot of that problem by being a little bit tighter. So we, uh, we get an instruction leaflet inside here. And uh, I'm a bit of a typical man usually. I do not tend to read instructions, but you know, with something as valuable as my Amiga, I thought we might give it a quick once over. So um, it basically says that it requires a little bit of skill. Make sure you have um, enough light at your desk. We're looking all right in here at the moment. Uh, open the computer, remove the keyboard. Done all that as well. Um, we know where the Lisa chip is on the Amiga. Um, we'll identify it as that one, I believe. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, Lisa, yeah, that's the one that we need to fit it over. Now, the way the Indivision works is you um, get this chip connector here. You literally put it over the top of the Lisa chip. So then it can interpret the signals from it and redirect them through this as uh, most of the chips on this circuit board are surface mounted, you see. So the only thing I need to do is uh, figure out which way it needs to go. So um, let's have a quick look. I presume it would be that way. Let's put it over there for a moment and uh, <laughs> check the picture inside. Um, yeah, it'd have been wrong there, you see. It actually goes that way around as we can see from the uh, little diagram there. And I've heard that you've got to give this a fair bit of force to put it over the chip, so there's nothing else blocking it there. Um, so we'll try and get it over without 
seem to fit pretty lightly, but there we go, I think that's on. You don't want to hear your Amiga 1200 motherboard creaking too much, but it needs a fair bit of force. There we go, I think that's got it. Yeah, and I heard that you should be able to basically lift up the motherboard, you know, if it wasn't in the case by just holding this. Um, so yeah, I think that's, um, that's been pretty sturdy by the feel of it. Now what we can do then is remove the floppy drive. Uh, and at the back of the A1200, there is actually, um, let's take this off quickly. I'll pull these out. The ideal place to fit this cord here would be in the back of the machine where we've got this um, blank little masking cover here. So um, I think someone should kind of release one of these where they've got a little cut out for the DVI port there, but at the moment I haven't got anything to cover it, so it's going to literally have to be a little bit of tape kind of holding it all in place for now, but you know, we'll get it looking a bit nicer soon. So I'm going to reassemble the machine um, and then we'll hook it up and see if it all works. All right, just quickly before we reassemble the machine, I've uh, removed the floppy drive port. Uh, figured out what that little nut that I had before is for now. Um, so the cable basically runs from the side of the in Indivision AGA, then it goes across to uh, the blank space. I've removed the floppy drive so we can see it a bit clearer. Um, and you also get the nut included, and quite handily, there's actually a hole at the bottom of the Amiga where you can just screw it in. So um, it's not the tightest fit in the world at the back, but I'd like something to cover the empty space eventually, but it you know holds it in place pretty well. So um, yeah, we'll actually put it all back together now and we'll see if we can use those new screen modes on the uh, VGA cable. Okay, so everything's hooked back up again now. Um, I didn't actually realize that the monitor that I'm using this on has actually got a DVI input. Um, so I need to go out and buy a separate DVI cable. But for now, I'm gonna use the um, DVI to VGA adapter from my Mac Mini, um, which should work fine, hopefully. Just plug this into the back of the um, Indivision. Now I haven't tested it yet, so this will be the first power on. If it all goes bang, then this will be a video for me to uh, watch in the future and remind myself not to try anything like this again, but I'm, uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> right then, let's turn on the Amiga power supply and stand back. Come on, camera focus. Excuse my camera trying to sort itself out. I might dim the lights a second. Might help if I turn the monitor on. There we go, so it's um, on the PC input at the moment, which is the VGA adapter on the back, and we have life. There we go in the corner, the individual computer's logo, which means the uh, Indivision output is working. And uh, there is my workbench screen being synced up to, I think it's 63 hertz, it said in the documentation. Yes, yeah, so it's displaying in pallet interlace there in 63. As you can see, the, uh, the overscan is not correctly set because we've got quite a big black border down the, um, top and side of the screen, but um, there is a config tool that Jens is going to release in the next couple of weeks which will give you a little bit more control on that. And also it recommends in the, uh, in the instruction manual to download a couple of things off Workbench and try out a few of the uh, high GFX screen modes such as 1024 by uh, 768 so I'm going to have a little uh, play around with those. But there you go, that is how you use your classic Amiga on a modern day PC monitor. Um, it's the Indivision AGA Mark II, and I'll provide links to Amiga Kit if you want to buy this. And there we go. If uh, someone like me can install it, I'm sure you'll have no problems. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Speak to you soon.